Sokatoa, solving for a side. Okay, so this is how we actually solve the thing. Now, I'm going to go through all the steps that I've gone through in the other videos because, well, I do this every single time I solve. So, although I went through a little bit slower before, I still go through the same process every single time. This wasn't just trying to, like, slow it down so you could see it. This is how it's actually done. Well, this is how I actually do it anyways. So, I always start by finding my angle. I'm going to use 28, so I put a little symbol right there. Now, that reminds me that I'm going from that angle, so the opposite is across here. So there's O, there's H, there's A. I always start off doing this. Don't have A. I'm using O and H, so I look up to Sokotoa and I go, hmm, which one of these do I use? Which one has O and H? There's O and H right there. And what does that start with? S. So that tells me to set up sine of the angle equals O over H. Now after a while you can stop writing this out over and over and over again and you can start going directly to sine of the angle which is sine of 28 degrees equals and it equals X over 12. Okay now we're gonna actually get into solving it. Okay so basic solving principles. Basic solving principles are you need to get the X by itself because I want to know what X is equal to. So I gotta get rid of that 12. Now what's that 12 doing? That 12 is dividing the x. So in basic math terms, that's how we solve all th things, we do the opposite. So in order to get rid of the 12, I'm going to take both sides and I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. So this side gets multiplied by 12, so I can just put a 12 in front, and this side gets multiplied by 12, so I can just write a 12 out here. Okay, so 12 outside of the bracket means it's multiplying in, now, what happens to x divided by 12 and x times 12? Well, when I divide something by 12 and times it by 12, those two 12s cancel out. And I get that 12 sine 28 degrees equals x. Now, I punch that into my calculator. I punch in 12 sine 28 and I hit equals or I punch in 12 times 28 hit sine and then hit equals you have to figure out how your calculator works. There are two different ways of punching this in, so depending on how you have to work your calculator, just make sure you can get this answer. And what is this answer? Give me a second. I'm gonna have to pause this. Yeah, now, why did I have to pause that? Because I forgot my calculator downstairs. So, what did I do instead? Well, if you don't have a scientific calculator yet, first of all, go get one. Second of all, use the calculator on your, uh, computer here. So I'm using the calculator on the computer here. In order to work that calculator I have to do 12 times 28 sine equals and I get 5.6335 but round that to 6 because I'm going to stop somewhere. Um, so yeah round that off. I usually round my sides to one decimal place so it's about 5.6. Okay, so if you got 5.6 with your calculator, then you're laughing. If you didn't get 5.6 with your calculator, then you need to figure out how to punch it in. I will make a video, but I need some other tools because I need to actually show you a calculator. Uh, some other time. Okay, let's go to this. Sorry, I just moved the screen there. Uh, let's go to this next one here. So I'm going to solve it the exact same way. I'm going to go whoopsh, across through that degree symbol. Anyway, so from that angle, I'm going to go across to here. This is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse side. This is the adjacent side. If you don't know how to label those, check out the other videos. Um, H, A, no O. Look up here. Which one uses A and H? This one does. So it tells me to use cos. So what does it tell me? It tells me that cos of the angle is equal to A over H. Now, I'm going to skip this step here. Hope you guys are ready for it. Cos. Whoa, yeah, sorry, I'm pretty sure I'm dyslexic. I haven't been tested for it yet, but um, that's why sometimes I write in the wrong order. Cos, 65 degrees, equals A over X. So you get A over H, sorry, so you get 7.8 over X. And now I have a conundrum. Last time I solved when x was on the top. So when x is on the top, I just multiply both sides by whatever was underneath it. That's easy. When x is on the bottom, what you have to do is, I can't get rid of 7.8. I've got to get rid of the x first. When x is on the bottom, you have to get it to the top. So what do you do to get rid of fractions? Well, I multiply by what's on the bottom. So what's on the bottom here? Well, what's on the bottom here? 
is x. So I take the x and I multiply both sides by x. What happens is the x ends up coming up here. So these x's disappear. And what do you get? You get x cos 65 degrees equals 7.8. OK, cool. So I got x out from under the bottom. Now I just have x times this, and how do I get rid of all this stuff? Well, I have to divide. So I take this whole thing and I divide by cos of 65. Now it is important to remember that cos of 65 has to stay together. You cannot just get rid of the 65. You can't just get rid of the cos. This whole thing in here, cos 65, that cos 65, that cos 65, they've got to stick together. They don't make any sense by themselves. A cos by itself doesn't make any sense. So x is equal to 7.8 divided by cos 65. OK, and now I'm going to have to punch this into my calculator again. So going to the calculator, I'm going to punch in 7.8 divided by 65 cos equals And I get x equals, and I'm just going to round it this time. I'm not going to write out a thousand decimal points. 18.456. 18.5. Okay, there's my next x. Okay, so I'm going to go through this quickly again. And then you can, I'm going to have practice videos. You can practice this over and over and over again, and you need to practice this. Set it up. When the x is on top, I just multiply both sides by what's underneath it. So you end up just getting what's the number multiplied under here. The side gets multiplied by the sine of 28. That's what happens when x is on top. When x ends up on the bottom of the ratio, you end up multiplying it up here, and then this multiplies down. So technically what happens is the x goes up here and the cos 65 goes down there. So these two things switch, and they switch by cross multiplication. Think about this cos 61 as being over 1. Now, that crosses up there, that crosses down there, and I get x equals 7.8 over cos 65. When x is on the bottom, I end up dividing by the sine cos or tan. When x is on top, I end up multiplying by the sine cos or tan. That's how you can help remember it. But you should be able to do this algebraic manipulation anyways, because that's important. Anyways, go practice this stuff. And then, when you've practiced it enough, I'll show you how to solve for an angle.